What's going on guys? In this video, I'm going to be breaking down a free little mini scheme for you out of the gun doubles formation in the New England Patriots playbook. What's going on guys? My name is Cody and I want to thank you for taking the time to watch this video. If this is your first time visiting my channel, my channel is focusing on helping people become the best Madden players that they can become. And so if you want to look to get better at this game, I post videos every single day that can help you get better on both the offensive side of the ball as well as the defensive side of the ball. And so if you're looking to get better, I just want to encourage you to hit the subscribe button at the bottom of the screen. Now in this video, I am doing a little bit of a series here on the New England Patriots playbook. I absolutely love this playbook. Um, I actually wrote an entire guide on this playbook, the entire playbook breaking down pretty much every single offensive formation in the New England Patriots playbook including the trips tied in, the bunch, the U-trips, as well as many of the other formations, literally every single one of them. So if you want to get my New England Patriots offensive guide, I'm going to leave a link to that in the description of this video. But what I want to talk about in this video is I want to talk about the gun doubles, because I feel like the gun doubles is kind of a forgotten about scheme. A lot of people run trips, formations, whether it be U-trips, bunch, or trips tied in, um, or even spread wide slot, or eye close, or a split close, whatever, right? Um, but what I want to talk about is how good a 2x2 two two double set can be in Madden, especially uh, when your opponent is doing a lot of Mabel coverage. So uh, the base play for this concept or this formation is going to be the under seams. And we're going to talk about how you can utilize this um, to really put a lot of stress on your opponent. Now, what I like to do as a general rule whenever I run this concept is I actually like to be on the left hash um, and the reason why is because it's just going to give me more space to be able to work the vertical seams on the right side of the screen. Now, one of the things that you're going to see your opponent do, especially if they are if they know what they're doing from a defensive perspective, is you're going to see they're going to want to use her kind of over in this area, especially with this specific formation. Because the beauty of the gun doubles is they have a really good running formation. Um, this inside zone is really, really hard to stop alongside of the trap and the quick base. Those are three really, really good runs. And so typically the best way for uh, someone to play run defense, specifically out of a 3-3-5 wide type of set, is to get a, something along the lines of this look right here. And so that's going to mean that you're going to get kind of this coverage if you're facing a lot of cover three. Now what I like about this play is you see how far split out the wide receiver on the right side of the screen is. And I feel like the spacing from this is really, really good. I just wish the left side guy was a little bit more to the left than he is in this picture but this will be just fine for what we're trying to do and basically what we're going to do here is we are simply going to run a levels concept so what i like to do is i like to take the triangle receiver and put him on a post route and then that's pretty much my read um, the only other thing that i typically will do out of this is i will id the outside linebacker on the right and then i'll actually um go ahead and put the running back on a block and release route. Just in case there is pressure, my running back can kind of deal with the pressure. The first read at the snap of the ball is if they're not using the seam route, you're gonna throw the seam route every single time. This is what makes the doubles, in my opinion, a really, really fun little formation to be able to run because it forces your user to really have to sit on that, on that route. For example, let's say that they are using um, someone on the left side of the screen, you'll see that this tight end route will run open uh, pretty much regardless. It's just a simple pass lead to the right, and as you can see, it's wide open. It's open early, intermediate, and late as well, which I really like that about this play. Now, you know, what that's going to lead to is they're going to start manning that player up 100%. So you're going to see something essentially like that, where they're going to put that tight end in man to man coverage. But what that's going to do is it's going to take away their, their zone on that side of the field. So this is where, you know, blocking your running back or just putting them on a block and release route is actually really helpful because you're going to see you're going to get really nice spacing. And this post route, once it comes across, is going to get over the top of the purple zone just like that. Any generic purple zone. And then basically you have a high-low between your post and your running back little uh, check and release pattern. The other thing that I like about this is the more that we can force their so then the more that we can force our user to go up the middle of the field, this is now going to open up this nice little concept for us here on the backside. This levels play, and this is my favorite play. It's my favorite type of way to to read a defense. And real quick, if you if they're running a lot of cover two, um, and you can honestly do this. I can actually do this 
uh, to the short side as well. So if they're running a lot of cover, it's probably better to the short side in all honesty. Um, so if they're running a lot of cover two, because if they're running a lot of cover two, this is what you're going to get. Okay, you're going to get this right here. Um, but if they're if they're not running a lot of cover two, then what I would recommend doing is taking the circle receiver and putting him on a curl. And then that way you're going to see that you're going to get this read right here. And this is really a great play um, because this high low on the left side, you're going to see that when you run a curl to the short side of the field like that, it's really going to do a good job of manipulating a purple zone. So there's really no purple zone in the game that's going to be able to defend the curl. Uh, I just showed you a curl flat, which in my opinion had the best chance. Uh, I'm going to put a seam flat out there real quick just to show you that you know, no matter what, the purple zone is not going to be able to get out there. Um, and if it does, I guess that seam flat will. Um, and if it does, then you can just hit the running back. Okay? So one of those two uh, is going to get open. And typically, a seam flat doesn't have as much success on the short side of the field. Um, I'm not sure. It must be a little bit of a fluke here. But basically, if you have a look like this, and why I like this so much is just because, you know, especially if you use like a block and release route, it really gives a lot of space to that running back to be able just to check release into the flat. But what this is gonna do is basically your initial read is the seam. Does this guy right here, does he chase the seam? You're gonna force him to do that. If he jumps to the left side at the snap of the ball and you don't throw the seam, like you are gonna mess up this play. This seam route is one of the most important routes. As you can see right here, it just splits the, the cover three shell. It also splits the cover two shell, which is what makes this play so powerful. So uh, let's say they're in cover two. The cool part about this is we're gonna put the middle linebacker in a lot of conflict, and really that's their user. And so if the user stays underneath, as you can see, we can throw the seam up to the tight end. But if the user goes with the tight end, if the user follows the tight end, that's where we really wanna be intentional about working our backside concept in this high-low levels read. Now, I want to start off by saying with this high-low levels read that this is a route that's going to come open at multiple points. It's a levels all the way across. And so I wouldn't expect, if I were you, um, I would not expect this uh, post route to, um, I wouldn't expect their user to ignore the post route. But typically what's going to happen is you're going to hit it if the user goes to the left. Um, and the reason why you're going to be able to hit it is because the yellow zone is too far down. It's too far underneath to be able to make a play. So if that linebacker goes there, just up past lead the post, and as you can see, you're able to hit this. Now let's say you're playing Madden and you don't have Hot Route Master. What would you? What would I do in that case? What I personally like to do, especially if my if I don't have a Hot Route Master uh, quarterback, is simply just use a Smart Route and Dig Route. The smart route of dig route will serve the same purpose because basically what we're trying to accomplish here is we're trying to get their user to come over here. If we can get their user to come over here, which that's the whole purpose of the tight end streak, and really what you could even do, I mean, I would just leave it like this, but you could even take the running back and put him on a ghost route in this example. And the reason why is because the yellow zone is it's going to put some pressure on the yellow zone. So then we're going to be able to throw the dig on the inside cut, just like we're able to throw the post, okay, as you can see. Now, uh, where this concept becomes even better, in my opinion, is let's say that they start to uh, get a little aggressive on the dig. So they're going to man up the basically inside man position on him, and then they're going to obviously take this post vertical or, or this, uh, this, this seam route vertical. Now what you're going to get is if they go with the post, from that perspective, as you can see, that square route is coming wide open underneath the middle of the, or over the middle of the, of the formation. So this formation can really create a lot of conflict for your user. Um, it really does force this middle linebacker to have to choose what he's going to do. And so if you run a good gun doubles, um, really what you're looking at is can I put a lot of stress on that linebacker to either have to work the tight end side or to have to work the slot side. The beauty of the levels concept is positioning of the slot cuts right underneath it so sharply. It is a little bit of a bang bang play, especially if they're a strategic user. But it also 
puts them in a lot of conflict. So this is a great little concept out of the doubles. And if you want to learn the rest of the gun doubles and the rest of the New England offense, I would encourage you to pick up my New England Patriots offensive guide. I'm going to leave a link to that down in the description of this video. It's the best offense that I've put out all season long, and I'm anticipating that it's going to be the best offense in Madden 22 as well. So if you want to get a head start on the competition for next season, go ahead and pick up that New England Patriots offensive playbook.